Let's take a look at clipping within Studio One, and specifically, we're going to talk about clipping on our main out, the master bus here. And here I've got a song that when I play back, we can see we have immediately some clipping here. We're going into the red. But I am happy with the mix and I'd like to keep it. I don't want to tweak anything else. So a very simple, easy way to fix this. And I want to say that this, these methods that I'm showing are really for beginners and hobbyists, even intermediate users. If you're already familiar with gain staging and mixing, then you already know the best practices to manage this. But I just wanted to show a handful of effective ways uh, to quickly get rid of clipping on the main for beginners. So really we can come to the plus and actually if I control E to export and say we want to export this song down and I click OK, you may be watching this video because you see that this clipping has occurred and we don't really want to have that in our render down audio file that we're going to be listening to and sh maybe sharing with others. So I'll go ahead and cancel out of here. Now, if I click on the plus, I'm going to just type in LIM for limiter that's now highlighted. I'll press enter. So now we have our limiter and Studio One, the limiter that comes with Studio One is a brick wall limiter. So this is going to prevent any audio signal from going above whatever we choose here. So I typically go with zero dB. So I'll select that. And now that we've got our limiter on the main bus, when I play this song back, we've got no more clipping. Okay, and then if we were to control E again, and then choose to export this song, then you can see that we're not getting any error messages. Okay, so we're all good there, and I'll, we won't watch this whole thing. I'll go ahead and cancel out. So that's a quick and easy way to put a limiter on here on the main bus. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind when we're making use of this method. This song is not was not clipping too bad, so this works out okay. If you have a song that's clipping a lot because you're not familiar with gain staging and mixing, then you're going to need to maybe use one of the other methods that I'm going to show here. And before we move on to cover those different methods, I do want to mention that I will always put my limiter within the insert section as the very last device. I don't use the post because this is post fader. And if you happen to do any automation on this fader, for instance, like a fade out at the end of your song, then that is going to affect the threshold and processing of your limiter. So I always put the limiter within the insert section as the very last device. Now we're going to go ahead and power this off just for a moment and take a look at a situation where we're coming in pretty hot to the main bus. Let's go ahead and close this out. Um, one thing that we can do is use a mix tool. So I'll again click on the plus and I'll type in mix. There's our mix tool. I'll press enter. Let's go ahead and click hold and drag that to the top. And if we're coming in really hot on the main, then this is going to potentially affect how our processors work. So for instance, I've got the IVGI here. If you got, got a super hot signal coming into here, then this emulates analog gear and that's gonna change the way it sounds. However hot your signal is coming into here, that's gonna affect the sound. So we can, manage the signal coming in to the main bus starting putting the mix tool at the top if i go ahead and play back let's open up our mix tool i can take this down a little bit more let's clear that reset it okay so this mix tool has gotten rid of our clipping mostly but also keep in mind that if we are reducing the level at the very top here, this is going to change the way, or it will potentially change how some of these other processor processes are functioning, particularly like the IVGI that are emulating analog gear. So you're going to lose some distortion uh, that may be added by this device. Um, if you're just using clean digital processing, then you shouldn't have an issue. But just keep in mind that you need to be aware of the signal and its level 
when you're coming in and going through other processors here. Now let's go ahead and close that out. And for the time being, we'll go ahead and remove the mix tool. Now, another method that you can use is you can find the offending channel or track that is causing the clipping. In this particular case, it's probably the kick or the snare that's making it clip. And then you can adjust those, although that can mess up your mix and you don't really wanna do that. But if you're not too concerned with that, you can just find the kick or snare or instrument that's really making it clip uh, and reduce that. Another thing that we can do is while this track channel is selected, I'll hold shift and click. Um, while all of these are highlighted, I can then reduce all of these at once. I'm just using my mouse wheel. And so let's play this back. Okay, so our limiter is off. And we're no longer clipping because we've reduced the level for every channel and all in relation to each other. So we're keeping that relative level for each one and getting rid of the clipping. This could be useful if you don't want to use a limiter for whatever reason. If you're gonna have someone else master, you don't wanna put on a limiter. Uh, on your main channel. Now, the only issue with this is that if you are using automation within here, it's, this can potentially destroy that automation because as we, let, let's just click once to select one here, as we move our faders towards the bottom, we're losing resolution here. So if you look at this, the difference here, we have 6 dB and this is very difficult to read, actually. And then minus, okay. So we are at minus 6.4. And then here we're at zero. Okay, then we have 12, 24. But as we move down, you see the resolution becomes a lot smaller. And the difference of dB that you're reducing or introducing becomes a lot more in a smaller space. So if you're making use of automation, this can really destroy that automation if you're pulling everything down with this method. So let's go ahead and control Z to take these back as they were. And then another method that we can use is if I click once to select here, the first one, I'll hold shift and select here, then I'll right click and let's send or add a bus for these selected channels. Uh, so they're all going to bus one. And then now when we play this back, we're clipping, but I can then reduce here. And then we can get rid of our clipping in this way. We, we're, our limiter is not active. And then we still retain the position of our faders here if we have any automation or things like that. Uh, so this is yet another way. And with this method, just also keep in mind that if you're going to be reducing the signal here at the bus and you've got these analog emul these devices that are emulating analog gear, once you reduce, then that is going to affect the sound of your final song because the level isn't coming in as hot again going back to the IVGI uh, so the hotter the signal is going into this then you're going to have more harmonics and that's going to change the color of your song so you will need to manage and gain stage if you're going to reduce here if you're going to take down on the bus that you've added then you may need to increase the trim on the IVGI so we'll go ahead and close that out and the next thing that I want to mention is that we only really need to worry about clipping on the main bus. If we're going into the red and our singles are super, our signals are super hot within the channels, we don't need to worry about that so much in the digital world. Because when we're working in the DAW, we're using floating point math and we pretty much have an endless amount of headroom. But once we hit the main, then we're switching to 
integer format, and then that's where you're going to get the clipping. So just as an example, I have created a separate scene here where I've increased the faders all the way. Uh, so let's double click here and switch to that. And we can see that I've pushed all of the faders up here. Now, if we go ahead and play this back, And let's actually let's actually add the bust back for these and take it up even more to make this incredibly clear. Okay, so you can see we're really hitting the red here. But if I simply reduce the main okay so we're not clipping here but it still sounds like it's clipping and the, and the reason for that is because right now the console shaper is active so if I double click here then we can see the console shaper now the whole point of this device is to emulate analog boards uh, so if we push the faders up like this on an analog console, then yeah, we're gonna have that distortion. But if we take the console sh shaper off and we're just, we're not emulating analog, then this should be clean. So even though we're hitting the red, we could take these up as high as we want. But we're not getting any uh, clipping, and there's no distortion because it's the the main bus that is most important that we do not clip on. We can go onto the red here on the channels. Now, the final thing I'll say is that while the main bus is really the area where we need to worry about clipping, another even more important area is clipping at our audio interface. So you need to be sure that before you begin recording, you play or sing the loudest passage of your song. Be sure to take note of your audio interface. If it is going into the red and clipping, they usually will have a lead that will turn red, indicating that you have clipping. If you record with clipping at your audio interface, it's going to be baked into your audio. And that's not good either. So first and foremost, be sure you're not clipping at your audio interface. And then second, be sure you're not clipping on your main. The channels here, it's no problem to go into the red because again, we're working with floating point within our DAW. It's just once it hits the main and then is sent out to your audio interface that you wanna be sure you don't have clipping here. And the last thing that I would like to reiterate is that when you're making all of these adjustments uh, with these method methods that I'm showing, just always keep in mind that if you're adjusting the level going into the main, you need to be sure that you are then gain staging any devices here, particularly ones that are emulating analog gear, because that's going to change the overall quality and color of your final song, um, and depending on how hot the signal is coming into the analog emulated devices. So I hope all of that makes sense. This topic can get incredibly convoluted, but I hope these simple methods that I have shown are going to help you out if you've been a little bit confused on what are some ways that you can get rid of clipping within your song. And if you're not familiar with gain staging, I would highly recommend, I personally love to use gain staging. I feel like once you take a few minutes to do that, it's going to make the rest of your mix go incredibly much easier and uh, it can help you with things like clipping as well. So if you'd like to check out a tutorial that I did on gain staging, then I'll put a little link up here in the top right corner. So feel free to check that out if you'd like. And otherwise, I hope this tutorial has been useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. And otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.